Well, we've got a brand new champion in the NHL. That's right. The Colorado Avalanche are your 2022 Stanley Cup champions. They take out the now former two-time defending Stanley Cup champions in the Tampa Bay Lightning. Closed it out on the road last night in Tampa in six games. That was the fourth series this year in the playoffs for the Colorado Avalanche, where they closed it out on the road. So impressive stuff from them and their coach, Jared Bednar, uh, leading them to the promised land. Kale McCarr winning the Conn Smythe Trophy. Nate McKinnon showing up at just the right time throughout the series, really playing some impressive hockey throughout that series and the entire playoffs. So congratulations to the Colorado Avalanche, their fans, their organization, and everybody supporting them. Probably gonna have a lot of fun celebrating this summer. Gonna have to follow that on Twitter and all the media outlets to see where the cup goes through the summer months. So thanks again guys for dropping by the channel. I was a little bit blown away by the last video I put out. Uh, so if you wanna leave a comment or hit the like button or hit that subscribe button, it does help me grow this channel a little bit further. I wanna keep doing cool things over here at Sasquatch NHL and bringing the updates to you guys on the regular. So thanks again. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the Stanley Cup Final. Who do you think the X Factor was? And obviously, what were your thoughts with Kale McCarr winning the Conn Smythe Trophy? Really impressive stuff from him. Love watching that kid play. He's only 23 years old. Norris Trophy winner now and Conn Smythe winner and a Stanley Cup champion. What more could you ask for with that team and that personnel going forward into another season where they've got a lot of potential to maybe chain a couple of their own championships back to back? We'll have to see. So today I want to give you guys my initial takeaway from that Stanley Cup final series. It was a very, very entertaining series. Couldn't have asked for more as a fan, except for maybe just that one more game, that game seven that we're we didn't get, but uh, I'm sure the fans in Colorado are happy now to have that Stanley Cup secured and not have to play a Game 7 at home. Would have been fun to see them potentially win it at home, but uh, nonetheless, they are the champion. They've got the Cup, and the parade will be happening in Colorado here real soon. I want to quickly go through the game recaps for this six-game series that transpired between Colorado and Tampa, break down the numbers just a little bit, talk about some of the key moments and things that happened along the way, some of the surprises, maybe compare against some of the predictions we all had coming into this. I also want to take a quick look forward for each team here, look at their contracts, look at their personnel, see what their rosters might look like as we go into a new season. Maybe one of these teams is going to try to go back to the Stanley Cup seems like Colorado is primed for a few years here where they are going to have some amazing talent on the table. Tampa probably going to be right back there again next year in the playoffs doing their thing, trying to get back to that Stanley Cup final once again. That's the ultimate goal for all these teams. So thanks again for dropping by, guys. Let's get into today's update. So for this update, we're going to take the lights down a little bit. I turned off the Kraken neon light as we turn off the lights on the 2021-2022 season. And uh, I thought it was a great way to close things out. An incredible series between two really top tier teams this year in the playoffs. So coming into the series, we always talk about special teams playing a big key. And obviously, it's always a big part of the story in each series. This one, no different. I thought the Colorado Avalanche did a really good job of capitalizing early on in the series on their power play. Overall, they went 6 of 16. That's 37.5%. But I thought a big bulk of those came up front in the series. It kind of tailed off there towards the end of the series. Tampa played maybe a little bit less disciplined than I thought they would, although both teams taking penalties up there into the high teens. 16 total power plays for Colorado and 19 power plays for Tampa Bay. They only capitalized twice on their power play, clipping at 10.5% there. Just not enough on the special teams from Tampa to make a difference in this series. I mentioned in my preview for the series, I thought the Avs really needed to get that good start at home, jumping out to a two-game lead in the series, and that's what they did. They got the first win at home in overtime, a really, really incredible game to start off the series. They got two goals early in the first period. Tampa answered back, and then Colorado put another one in there at the end of the first to make it 3-1. to one. We got through the second period, Tampa pushing back, evening things up on the scoreboard. We go all the way into overtime, and Andre Burakovsky gets that game winner in OT, a great feed from Nachuskin across the zone there, and a really great way for Colorado to start off the series with an OT winner. The crowd was energized, and then you go into game two, and it was just a complete wipeout. The Avs stormed out of the gate in game two, put up three goals in the first period, another two in the second, and two more in the third to pile on, making it seven to nothing. Tampa had no answers on that evening. And again, Colorado capitalizing on their power play early on in that game and early in this series. I thought it made a huge difference, propelling them to their third Stanley Cup in franchise history. 
Colorado put up 30 shots in that game and seven goals. Pretty impressive stuff from their offense there, just firing on all cylinders. And again, we talk about that cliche, the best defense is a good offense, and it was certainly the case in this game, game two, and in this series throughout. Colorado really making Tampa defend. I thought that was another big key to their series victory and their Stanley Cup championship. So Tampa going home, game three, they need that response, in danger of going down 3-0 in the series, and that's exactly what they get. A big response, they win 6-2 in blowout fashion again, and uh, you wonder where the normalcy in the ups and downs of the series are going to go after you've seen an overtime game and then a blowout for Colorado and then a blowout for Tampa Bay. They really brought it all to the table there. Even with Colorado opening the scoring in that game three, Tampa settled in. They did a really good job. They actually went one for six on power plays in that game. So Colorado starting to take too many penalties, not playing discipline, and it kind of got away from them there in the game three. Again, Colorado putting a lot of shots on in that game despite the lopsided victory for Tampa. Colorado came up with 39 shots to Tampa's 33 in that game. Vasilevsky was incredible in response after getting blown out 7-0 in Game 2. He came back and really anchored Tampa to a big Game 3 victory to get them back into the series. Game 4 rolls along, and Colorado kind of looking for a response after getting blown out themselves, after they had done the same thing to Tampa in Game 2, and that's exactly what they get. A good response. They win it 3-2 in overtime. Nazem Kadri gets that huge game winner coming off of injury, the thumb surgery, just 18 days or something like that. He came back and was able to play in the final. Really incredible stuff. Great sacrifice from him, and it was great to see him have a positive outcome after some of the stuff that he went through in these playoffs. Both teams were pretty even in the shot count in that game, 37 for Colorado, 39 for Tampa Bay. And I thought goaltending for both teams was pretty good throughout the entire series. Darcy Kemper obviously upped his game. He was really steady for Colorado throughout the playoffs. He ended up with a 9.08 save percentage in this series. Pretty impressive stuff from him. Andre Vasilevsky, on the other hand, definitely not the reason Tampa lost. He was incredible throughout the entire series and through the playoffs. He ended up in this series with a 9.05 save percentage. And in the playoffs overall, a 9.22 save percentage. So really incredible goaltending. Darcy Kemper did exactly what he needed to do for Colorado to backstop them to their third Stanley Cup in the franchise history. So great stuff from the goalies and the shot counts were up there throughout most of this series. So we go ahead to game five here. Tampa facing elimination. Got to get that win out on the road in Colorado. And that's exactly what they do. Had a really great game throughout. I thought that they at times had to repel Colorado's offensive firepower over and over. Vasilevsky was really key in this game. Again, 37 shots from Colorado in this one. Uh, but Tampa got it done, and they forced that game six back at home. Andre Palat with the game winner in this game, uh, just with about seven minutes to go, six, seven minutes to go there. Really great goal from him, uh, from Victor Hedman and Mikhail Sergachev on the assist there. A really key goal, and it set them up for a chance to stay alive and force game seven. So that brings us all the way back to last night, game six from Tampa. Colorado trying to close things out, and you could just get the feeling in the air that it was going to happen. Kale McCarr just incredible again throughout this game. Nate McKinnon showing up at just the right times. And uh, Colorado Avalanche get it done. Steven Stamkos actually opened the scoring. And you thought Tampa was really going to start to pile on. But once they didn't get that two-goal lead, it kind of felt like maybe Colorado was going to settle things. And that's what they did. They settled in. And they played a really competitive game the rest of the way. And they captured their third Stanley Cup in franchise history. Congratulations to them. An incredible series and an incredible spring and summer playoff run for the Avalanche. Arturi Lykanen got the game winner last night. That was his eighth of the playoffs, assisted by Nate McKinnon and Josh Manson. So he had an incredible playoffs for the Colorado Avalanche as well. A lot of players stepped up. You saw some of the depth arrive at times for Colorado. And the goaltending, it kept them in throughout, I thought. Darcy Kemper did a really good job, uh, despite some of the circumstances. Being injured early in the playoffs, coming back. And uh, he didn't skip a beat. He played really well for Colorado and well-deserving of that Stanley Cup. Like I mentioned earlier, I really did think that the Game 4 OT win by Colorado out on the road, that was really the whole series changer for me uh, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, it really propelled them more confidence on the road. Tampa did win the next game uh, as they had to stay off elimination. But I really thought that was the key. If Tampa could have tied the series there in Game 4, things might have played out a little differently going through and maybe we would have got to seven games I don't know but uh, definitely the series changing moment for me was that game winner in overtime for Nazem Kadri. 
It's also worth mentioning once again that Colorado did close out every series on the road in the playoffs this year. That's not easy to do, especially in hostile environments uh, against some of the teams they played against, St. Louis, Tampa, Nashville in that first round, and of course Edmonton when they swept them in four games. So great stuff from Colorado. Being a really resilient road team, huge factor for them winning this year's Stanley Cup. Got to point out also for Corey Perry, that's three years in a row now that he has lost in the Stanley Cup final. So too bad for him. Uh, he always plays the villain, so people don't feel that bad for him. But uh, pretty unlucky. Uh, we'll have to see where his career goes from this point forward. Kale McCarr was incredible throughout the entire playoffs in this series. Maybe round two was where he dipped in production just a little bit, but he was still solid, I thought, throughout that round as well. And this kid, again, he's only 23 years old. I can't wait to see where his game evolves to and improves from here. I would imagine good things are on the horizon for him. He's really fun to watch, and uh, I would imagine he's going to see a lot of success in his career. Potentially a Hall of Famer. I think so, yeah. Going into the offseason, Colorado is going to be busy on the front of contracts and personnel. They've got Darcy Kemper's contract up this summer. He's backstopped them to that Stanley Cup. So it's going to be interesting to see the negotiations with Kemper just remain as the Colorado Avalanche goalie moving forward. They do have some cap space, uh, but a lot of people that are going to be potentially on the move here and guys that they need to lock up and make decisions on. Nazem Kadri, also one of those players. He had a career best 87 points this year, so that's definitely going to be on the table for negotiation. You also have Valerie Nachushkin, who is going to be a free agent. He had a career best 52 points. So another tough situation for Joe Sackick trying to negotiate with these guys who had career years uh, when they're going into free agency. Other names to note here as free agents, you've got Nico Sturm, Andrew Cogliano, and Josh Manson, as well as Jack Johnson, Darren Helm, and Andre Burakovsky. On the restricted front, they have to deal with Arturi Lykanen's contract. He had that series clinching goal like we talked a little bit about earlier, so I'm sure they will keep him in-house at a reasonable rate. See what happens with Colorado Avalanche. A lot of moving pieces on this roster and a lot of names to lock up moving forward. Tampa, on the other hand, they don't have much cap space at all, but they don't have a lot of moving pieces here. They are going to see Andre Palat go to free agency. Uh, maybe they can keep him in-house. We'll have to see what happens in that negotiation. You've also got Nick Paul, Riley Nash, and Jan Ruta. Not names that come immediately to the top of your head when you think about the Lightning and everything they've done the last few years, but definitely important players as well. So they'll have some decisions to make there. But overall, I would say that their core is locked up here for the next couple of years, two to three years. So they really do have another shot at this thing moving forward. And uh, I don't see any reason they can't get right back at it here next year, go on a playoff run. But that goaltender, Andre Vasilevsky, he's just amazing. And you've got Steven Stamkos leading the way, Kucherov, on and on. We don't need to name all the names again, but uh, Tampa is definitely set up nicely for the next couple of years outside of the fact that they are a little bit cap strapped. So it'll be really interesting to see as we move into the offseason towards the draft, how these teams are going to respond from everything that went down in the playoffs and how they're going to restructure and move forward into the future. Can't wait to see what happens. Looking forward to the draft. Going to do a little bit of coverage here on Sasquatch NHL covering that. Hoping to do a couple of live streams here in the near future. Love having you guys on for that in the chat. I'd like to pop your comments up on the screen and interact with you. And it's a lot of fun. So thanks for being a part of it. Again, if you want to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Helps me grow the channel. If you want to hit the alert notification for when I go live, you can hop on here and chat with me. Love interacting with you guys. So thanks again for dropping by the channel, you guys. Right here at Sasquatch NHL. Going to keep the updates coming for you. And I appreciate all the feedback. Trying to improve, grow as a small channel going into the future. And I can't wait to cover Seattle Kraken in season two. So really fun to bring these updates to you. I'm going to keep it going. And again, thanks for all the support. We'll talk to you guys again real soon on an update here in the near future.